are the children of God. You are the reason and the rhyme for everything you see before you. Without us, this world is nothing. Do you understand that? It's our backs that they made that they made America what it is today. Give me Deuteronomy 7 and 6, sir. Take your time. We're gonna get an understanding today. Because America tells us one thing. God tells us another. The scripture says, let God be true and every man a lie. So we're going to speak from the Bible. What did God say? Read. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6. For thou art in holy people. We are a holy people. A lot of us think that's got some kind of spiritual, magical, we're going to fly or see ghosts or something. That ain't got nothing to do with that. Holy just means separate. We are a set-apart people. You can tell in our swag. You can tell by the way we cook, the way we dance, the way we look, the way we love. We are a holy people. We are set apart. What does that mean? We shouldn't be in them lines over there. We set apart. Them lines ain't for us. Every nation under the sun can stand on them lines. But guess who shouldn't? Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. You are the bloodline of God. And that is what you are to live to. You are holy. Let's keep reading. What else God say? Unto the Lord. We are holy unto the Lord. That means the Lord is sitting on his throne. And he's looking at blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Like, boy, that's the dopest thing I ever made. Wait until they realize it. See, he's just waiting on us to realize it. Because right now, we think we're American. You understand? Right now, we take pride. Yeah, I'm from India. That's what I rock. And I ain't mad at you. Right. But understand, you're greater than Indy. You're greater than America. There's no city in this country that, that, that is greater than who you truly are. You are the bloodline descendant of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. These are the prophets, people. We're talking about the prophets of God. That's your bloodline. What is greater than that? Let's keep reading. The Lord thy God. That don't come. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. The Lord, not us, not what we talking about, not man, not Donald Trump, not what, what's the other crazy lady name? Not her, none of them. The Lord chose us. God, the one that the, every, everybody got their own God and they thinking they talking to the highest power. Well, guess what? The real highest power said blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, you are mine. That's what the Lord said. That's right. So now, how do we tap into that power? Right. Not by voting, I can tell you that. Right. We done did that, what, about 60 years? I promise, I don't, listen, I don't know where you're from, but whatever hood you're from, I promise it either looks the same or got worse ever since we start voting. Right. Cut will come. Let's keep reading. Above all people. Equal to all people. Above all people. I got a quick question. If God says we are greater than all people, should we live to that standard or fight to be equal with a people that God called us greater than? That's what God said. I think we should do what God said. Read that again. Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. That's in the Bible. I bet they didn't read that in Sunday school, did they? That was there, right there in the Bible. In the laws of God, he's telling the children of Israel, blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, you are greater than all people upon the face of the earth. Why do you think they're doing our dances in China? Why do you think that when they want to learn how to cook, they look at us? Dance, us. Music, us. Build something, us. Give me Habakkuk 2 and 12. Everything is built off us, but we don't get the credit for it. Cut over cut. People don't even know the only reason America's army ain't falling apart is because there's a black a black general running the entire army of the United States. You think Joe Biden is the commander in chief? He can't even command the toilet. They got to take him to the bathroom. It's a black man who run the entire army of the United States. You didn't even know that, did you? It's a general, a black general. 
He was on NATO the other day, on, on the internet. Go on the internet, type in the chief of the Secretary of Defense is a black man. The only reason this arm, this the, the oppressor's army ain't having a civil war is because of a black man holding it together. Because these oppressors, they ready to turn on each other. That's the, what they do. They All they know is war. All they know is, is, is steal, kill, and destroy. So they, they don't believe that, they don't trust the government. They think the government caused the hurricane in North Carolina. So what are they doing? They in pickup trucks driving around trying to kill FEMA workers. If that wasn't going on, who do you think they'd be trying to go after? Us. It's time to wake up, black man. It's time to wake up. They're going to turn on each other and they're going to go crazy. they waiting to go crazy. The oppressor has been uh, civilized too long. He don't want to be civilized no more. He want to shoot up the school, the house, the courthouse, the church, the building, everything. He don't even want to say sorry for slavery. In 2024, with all this knowledge and information that the world has, he's still thinking people so ignorant, they gonna, they forgot about the, the ills of slavery. Like we supposed to forgive them and love them and we don't know about what happened. The oppressor's waiting to do it, man. So it's time for you, black man, to get yourself together, come into school with us, learn, build. We got to get our straps up. We gotta get our knowledge up. Right, most yeah. most importantly, we gotta make sure the Lord is on our side. Right. Cause I don't care how many straps you got, That's if right. the Lord ain't with you, you gonna you you gonna get you gonna bite the dust. That's right. That's right. So that's that's the truth, brother. So keep keep teaching what you're teaching, brother. Go to Wakanda. Give it up for that powerful priest and prophet, Most High Christ. Drop that. Give me John 15. So like, we we'll go there later. Most High Christ. What he said is so heavy, man. Like we are the only reason that America is surviving right now. It's only because of us. But you got to realize something. What if, just what if, what if we took all that love and energy that we give to America and gave it to ourselves? Right. What if we did it for us? What if we say, you know what? Every nation outside of us, do what thou wilt. Have fun. You want to go to a Diddy party, go to 10 of them. Have fun. <laughs> but us, we're going to build us up. Right. You understand? We're going to serve the Lord. We're going to build us up the righteous way. Because we done had plenty of organizations try to do it. But who truly tried to do it according to what the Lord said? Right. Well, guess what, blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans? You're looking at it right before you. Right. This is the answer to everything you've ever thought about in life. Every question you've ever had, the answer's right here. You know how I know? Because I came and got the answers for the questions I had. Right. That's why I'm here now. So I can testify that this is the truth. Right. Let's 15. Yep. Uh, John 15, 12. The book of John, chapter 15 and verse 12. This is my commandment. This is Christ's commandment. Because, yes, we do follow Christ. Because he is the greatest black man to ever walk the earth. That's right. Understand that. Christ is the greatest black man to ever walk the earth. And that's a fact. Read. That ye love one another. That ye do what? Love one another. Right. That you make sure you see the odds. That ye love one another. That you divide amongst each other because of religion. Love one another. No, because you, you voted for Biden or, and you voted for Donald Trump. We can't be one. Love one another. The Bible says blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Love one another. Christ is talking to his people saying, hey, all this division ain't needed. All this hate ain't needed. All this violence ain't needed. Love one another. This is why Christ said, forgive your brother 70 times, seven times. Not to let him get over on you, but to build us up. This thing is greater than any one individual, man. We are our only hope to build our nation back. What matters more than our nation? Our God. Read. As I have loved you, uh -huh. greater love hath no man. So greater love than no man, what? Than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. The scripture says that a man lay down his life for his friends. Now, when you understand the scriptures, those friends are Israelites. Right. Those friends are blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. That's the greatest love that you're supposed to have. Meaning what? I'm not going to forsake my brother for any other nation. I'm not going to forsake my brother to go vote for somebody because he don't like him. I don't care about that. You know what I care about? Building up my community. 
Making sure the next generation has it better than I. That's what it is. The men you see before you right now, we've already committed our lives to this. That's right. This is what we do. We are literally, we go to a school to make sure we have the answers for our people. This is a school before you. Read, read that again. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man laid down his life for his friends. Uh -huh. Now what did Christ, now keep reading, what did Christ say? Ye are my friends. We are what? My friends. We are Christ's friends. We are his brothers. Not everybody. He's talking to Israelites. He's saying, ye are my friends, blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. You. Christ is calling us out. This is on us. You want to know why ain't nothing changed and there's a Christian church on every other corner? Because they're not teaching the truth. If they're teaching you to love everybody, they're teaching you to hate the people God loves. We cannot love everybody and love ourselves at the same time. I ain't saying you gotta hate everybody, but you have to have a passion and a love for your people. That's what Christ had. That's what Christ operated out of. This is why he said, ye are my friends. He didn't say all that believe are my friends. Ye, you. Right. So now, who's gonna answer that call? Who's gonna come get a fly and learn how to be a brother to Christ? Right. Who's gonna do that thing? Read. If. Ye do whatsoever I command you. Read that from the top of that verse. Ye are my friends. If ye do whatsoever I command you. That's how you be a brother or a friend to Christ. You do the commandments. You keep what he uh, kept. He kept the law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High God. Guess what you need to do? Guess what we need to do? Keep the law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High God. Guess what? Christ never celebrated Halloween. Christ didn't care who they voted for. Christ didn't care about that. You understand? This is why he said, give unto Caesar what is Caesar's, but give unto the Lord what belongs to him. Guess what belongs to the Lord? Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. And let me say something. What's so heavy with the brother bringing out? We already had a chance to vote. Our ancestors did in Jerusalem. You might not remember. About 2,000 years ago. And guess what? We voted for Barabbas. We ain't vote for Christ. So now... Don't vote for Barabbas, vote for Christ this time. Let's get it right. You understand? Because there's only a little bit of time left. There's only a little bit of time left. This World War III coming, and this place will have to go to hell. Hell in a handbasket. It's going to be lawless. You understand? It's going to it's gonna, it's gonna turn into the jungle out here. Right. And unless you're with your brothers, got that strength of the Lord with you, you're you, you going to get picked off. Just like anything in the, in the wilderness. When you're not with your, with your animal uh, herd or whatever, or your people, that's what happens. Go ahead, brother. Most high in Christ. Give it up for that powerful priest and prophets. Most high in Christ. Let's, uh, let's drop that. Let's go to Ezekiel 37. Let's go to Ezekiel 37 starting at 21. Because I want to read what, what, what this whole thing is about. See, everybody thinks when Christ came on the scene, he was talking for everybody. And Christ opened it up for the whole world of everybody. And, and that's what Christianity tells us. I believed it at one point in time. No, I'm not going to be mad at you. I understand. But this is what we're here to tell you. There was always a play or a purpose for why Christ came. Right. When he started going to all nations, there's a reason. Guess what was prophesied before he went to all nations? That the children of Israel would be scattered to the four corners of the earth. That's right. So if they are scattered to the four corners of the earth, how do you go get them? Let's read. The book of Ezekiel. Chapter 37, verse 21. And say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God. Now when it says say unto them, he's talking to you blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. This is what we are to say unto our people. Read. Behold, I will take the children of Israel from among the heathen. That's what we're doing here. We are trying to help the children of Israel come from among the heathen. A big part of it is getting out of that line. Get out of that line. Come from among the heathen. The heathen taught you to vote for them. That's right. Do you understand Kamala Harris, Donald Trump, whatever other heathen you want to throw in there has not spent a day in our shoes. That's right. Not a day in our shoes. That's right. And yet, we're going to go over there, spend about four or five hours in the line to vote for somebody who we know don't care about us. That's right. 
not going to do a damn thing for us. Right. Let's keep reading what God said. Take them from among the heathen. Because remember, we read Deuteronomy 7 and 6, and it said, Ye are holy, meaning you are separate. From the beginning of this thing, we were always called to be separate. Let this noise pass. From the beginning, we were always called to be a separate people. Even our, our swag, everything about us is separate, even amongst everybody. You're going to notice when you're around blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Let's keep reading. Whether they be gone, and we'll gather them on every side. See, no matter where the Lord scattered us, we are his children. If you got a child they lost, are you just going to let them be? Or are you going to go get them wherever they at? Right. You better go get your child. Well, how much more your God? Whatever you're thinking the value of your child is, you mean that much more to your God. It's that simple. Let's keep, let's keep reading. And bring them into their own land. Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans didn't even know that part. We got our own land? Yeah, we got our own land. We have our own land. This is why we don't have to vote for them. That's irrelevant to us. We don't have to spend Christmas with them. That's irrelevant to us. We don't have to celebrate their holidays. That's irrelevant to us. We got our own people, our own God, our own land, and our own leader, Yahweh Shah, Jesus Christ. We don't need them. We need each other. We have everything but each other. When are we going to just stop and look and notice, okay, let me join with my people. My people. I'm not going to hate that brother because he wears red or blue or I was about to say perfect. I don't know how Let's keep reading the Bible. And I will make them one nation. He will do what? Make them one nation. The Lord said he wants us to be one nation. Not uh, from Indianapolis or from, from California and all that. He wants us one nation, one people. How do you know that? Logic tells us that. We came over on them slave ships together. Right. Well, how you think we're going to get out of here? The same way we got over here? Right. Right. Together. Together. The Lord made it very plain and simple for us. We are in this thing together, no matter how much you may not like your next right. common right. black man or woman. We are our only hope. Let's keep reading. And the land upon the mountains of Israel. Uh -huh. And one king shall be king to them all. See, that's why we don't have to vote. We have one king that's going to be king to us all. Do you know who that king is? Oh. The Lord already prophesied it. He already gave it to us. It's Christ. Yahweh, right. the greatest black man that ever walked the earth. Right. He was the coldest. I, I would love for y'all just to get in class just to hear the stories of how Yahweh worked. Like, right. Christ was Christ was not what the Christian church tells you. Oh my. It, it, Christ was cold with it. Let's keep reading. So one king, that's Christ. We already got our king. We don't need to do that. We ain't got to stand nowhere for four or five hours. Right. Anything, we can get a bottle and laugh at them. But we don't need to do that. We good. We got ours. And they shall be no more two nations. And they shall do what? Be no more two nations. We will no more be two nations. That two nations is talking about the northern and the southern kingdom. We were already split in our land. This is why we're going through a lot of the things we go through now because we don't understand. We need each other. Right. We need each other. Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans need each other. There's a reason why we go through a lot of the same atrocities because we will not gather together. Right. We need to gather together. Right. The power is already within us. This is why I say that I'm paraphrasing, but the scriptures talk about how the kingdom of heaven is already within us. That's what it's talking about. As soon as we stop playing come together, you're going to start noticing, oh, we got the power. The power is already here. The Lord is with us. That's right. Hey, every other nation come together. Definitely the white man. Definitely the Jewish. Right. We know that. Why don't we? Neither shall they be divided into two kingdoms anymore at all. The Lord don't want us divided anymore at all. You want to see the power of God? Stop being divided amongst your people. It's that simple. You want to see the power of God? Start obeying what the Lord said do. You want to see the power of God? Start following Christ. 
You so we sit up here. I know. Listen, ain't nobody praying more than black people. I know. I, God just get me out of this. Just I, I know I shouldn't have had it, but it just I know. I know. Right. But I didn't start seeing the power of God till I start gathering with His people. That's Those right. prayers didn't start getting answered until I had to humble down before the throne. That's right. And that's what we need, blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. I'm not mad at you being prideful because you are a glorious people, and I'll be the first to tell you. But we got to understand what to be prideful in. We need to be proud for in, prideful in our power. Our power is the most high. The most high is why we why we so great. The most high created us like this. That's what we take pride in. You understand the Lord? And there ain't nothing wrong. Don't let nobody tell you you can't take pride in your God and serve in your God. Again, this ain't Christianity. This is the truth. Where we at? Verse 23. Neither shall they defile themselves anymore with their idols. We're not going to defile ourselves with idols. Guess what? A lot of our people think, I don't, I don't deal with idols. You ever served Christmas? You ever served your birthday? Put that Christmas tree up, put them gifts under there? Oh, yeah. Oh, I forgot. We're getting ready for Halloween right now. When not only are we going to serve Halloween, we're going to teach our babies to serve them idols. Well, we say we love our babies, right? The, forget me, it's about the next generation, right? But from a child, from the youth, we groom them to serve idols. Do we really love them if we're doing that? When the, listen, the, the, the greatest power known to anything says, I'm for you, black man. I'm for you, Hispanic man. All you got to do is serve me, and that's how we tap into that power. This ain't no magical, ooky, spooky stuff. Like, I'm, I'm serious. There's a power that we serve that the world can't touch. That's right. We have the power to go serve him. Let's keep reading. Nor with their detestable things. That pork, shrimp, crab, and lobster is detestable. We got to put that down. You understand? The holidays. vote. That's a detestable thing. Like, America has beat us down so much. Think about this. America beat us down so much that we literally go vote for the exact same people that beat us down. Uh, yeah, right, for another four years of a beatdown, right? You know they're going to promise us something. Right. By this time next year, they're going to be like, what you talking about? I don't remember that. We ain't had that conversation. Yeah, it goes like that every four years. Right, <laughs> right. Can't do it. Congress is, Congress is always against something with black people. <laughs> exactly. We gotta, we gotta have common sense, and I know we got common sense. Ain't nobody got more common sense than us. It's time to wake up. It's time to wake up and serve our power, our God. Come together. Be one. Be no more divided. Now give me Habakkuk 2 and 12. Now let's understand why we shouldn't be no more divided. Because the Bible answers everything. There's nothing that we've ever questioned in our life that we cannot find the answer in the Bible. This is one of many reasons why we need to come together, why we have to stand strong for each other. I'm gonna tell you right now, I don't think that there's anything more formative than a unity of blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, knowing who they are, having the wisdom and knowledge of the Most High God, and being ready to die for their brother. Right. There's nothing more powerful on this earth. Two and twelve. The book of Habakkuk, chapter two and verse twelve. Woe to him that buildeth a town with blood. It says, Woe to him that buildeth a town with blood. Guess how this town was built? Matter of fact, how about this? Let's just guess how America was built. It was built with blood. Guess who blood it was built with? our ancestors it is an atrocity for us to be over there voting when this whole city this whole town the, the whole country was built off the blood of our ancestors how do you think that would make them feel if they seen us here today saying we vote for the people that killed you yep i'm gonna go vote for them that's sad we gotta do better we gotta do better and we can do better. This is why the Lord brought the priests and prophets out here today. To help us do better. Read. And establish it a city by iniquity. How was any city in America established? You know they made over 500 treaties with our 
ancestors, with the Native Americans. Guess how many treaties they kept? Not one, not one. That one math equation is very simple. It's, they didn't keep one. Made 500 treaties with our ancestors and they didn't keep one. Go ahead. Behold, is it not of the Lord of hosts that the people shall labor in the very fire? That's the Lord. He's letting you know that day is coming. The same people that built this city on the backs of our uh, forefathers. You understand? There's a fire coming to this place. He just got done telling you World War III is on the way. That thing is serious. It's biblical. You got to understand, every world war was prophesied in the Bible before it ever happened. They teach you that in Sunday school? They teach you that when the uh, pastor was talking about how good God was? He didn't say nothing about that. Every, every world war was prophesied in the Bible before E1 happened. And guess what? All two of them happened. There's a third woe coming. You understand? Now drop that. Give me um the larger. There we go. Give me uh Isaiah 13 and 12. Isaiah 13 and 12. Let's see what the Lord said. This is why it's vital for us to come together as a people. This is why it's vital for men. Men, we gotta stand up and be the leaders of our communities. It's on us. Yeah, that, no, we will never have a woman leading us. And that's not to knock women, because we want women to be in their righteous order. You understand? The Lord said the righteous order is the most high Christ, man, woman. So guess what? That's how we're supposed to do it. But in order for us to do it, we have to have the knowledge of God to lead our household. We cannot lead them if we still up here telling our household, let's stand in a line for five hours and vote for somebody that hate us. I can tell right now, you can't lead a household doing that. Mm -mm. Not at all. Let's get it. Where we at? The book of Isaiah, chapter 13 and verse 12. Uh -huh. I will make a man more precious than fine gold. That's what the Lord said. He said, I'm going to make a man more precious than fine gold. That's what the Lord told you. But guess what? We got to serve him. We cannot keep serving America. The Lord said, I already see it in you. I'm going to make you more precious than fine gold. Don't guess what? The only thing that's holding us back. Kind of what kind. Guess what? The only thing holding us back from being more precious than fine gold. Us. Us. We're our worst enemy. We are the reason why the Lord says, hold on, you're more precious than fine gold, but I, I can't do that yet. You, you still want to go vote. You're more precious than fine gold, but I can't do that yet. You, you still got to smoke and do drugs. You understand? We hold us back. We are our worst enemy. You understand? Give me one last scripture. Uh, Romans 9. We'll end it right here. Most high in Christ. Romans 9 starting from 1. If you are a black, Hispanic, and Native American man, woman, or child in the sound of my voice, just come get a flyer. Had a conversation. That's, what I, that's how it started with me. Romans 9 and 1. Just get a flyer. You get a flyer, I guarantee you, it'll change your life. Go ahead, Romans 9 and 1. The book of Romans, chapter 9 and verse 1. I say the truth in Christ. This is the truth in Christ. This is the truth. What we're about to read is the truth. Read. I lie not. My conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost. So now this is Paul who Christians think that they make their whole religion off of. This is what Paul said. This is the truth in Christ and he lied not. His conscience is, is bearing, a, is bearing a witness in the Holy Spirit. You understand? Like, this is serious. What he, whatever he's about to say, this is serious. He takes this to heart. Read. That I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. The Lord, or Paul said he had great heaviness and continual sorrow in his heart. Why? Is it for everybody in the world to be saved? Let's see. Read. For I could wish that myself were cursed from Christ. A curse from Christ just means he's wishing that knowledge and that wisdom that he has of the Lord, he could take it from himself. Now that's a heavy burden right there. Why would you want to take the greatest knowledge in the world from yourself? There's no greater knowledge on this earth than the Bible. Christ said, I mean not Christ, Paul said, take it from me. Why did Paul say take it from me? 
For my brethren. For everybody. My brethren. For all people that believe in. My brethren. No, for the Caucasian that I'm alive after they raped Robin Gillis for 400 years. My brethren. My brethren. That's a bloodline. My brothers, man. You want to know why we walk around saying what's going on? Brother, what's good, sister? Because it's a biblical. They were the prophets were doing that from the beginning. We are the spirit of the prophets because we are the prophets. Right. That's who we are. Go ahead. My kinsmen, my brethren, my kinsmen. Just in case you want to say, no, we're all brothers in Christ. Everybody that believes this is a brother. Well, he said, no sweat. I'm going I'm to break it down for you. My brothers, my kinsmen. Y'all know who kinfolk is. You ain't need the truth to know what kinfolk was. I knew that at seven years old. Read. According to the flesh. Just in case you didn't get it, it's still according to the flesh. This is about a family. This is about a bloodline. This is about blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. We are the children of God. And it's time for us to come home and be one. And that's what you see right here before you. Read. Who are Israelites? That's who we are. We are all Israelites, blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Now come serve your God. With that, I'm priest and prophet uh, Yahweh Thumb at ISU PK. That's my time. Shalom. Hey, Shalom. Get that powerful priest and prophet ahead, man. Get that powerful priest and prophet ahead. We the ISU PK. Started out at 1 West, 125th Street, Harlem, New York, under Command Jehana. And what we come out here to do is teach blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians that they the chosen people of God and that our oppressor is the devil the Bible speaks of. Now what you gotta understand about being the devil, it means you are a deceiver. So what you gotta understand is not only is the white man the deceiver, also is the Africans. 